Blockchain is one of the most untapped niches in software development with tremendous upside potential for developers. It's a rapidly growing trend in tech when the demand is simply larger than the supply of the number of people who know what they're doing. And because the opportunity is so big, you know, there's actually a problem. All right. Most people are going after this and they're doing it the wrong way. And in this video, I want to talk about some of the top mistakes that I see people making every single day when they're trying to break into this field, especially in the age of AI. And in this video, I'll break down the wrong way people are doing this and how to fix it. I'll talk about all this as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis and who actively trains developers and helps them get jobs in the industry. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you like what you've seen in this video today and you want to work with me to become a blockchain developer and break into the industry, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's talk about the wrong way or wrong ways that I see people trying to learn blockchain and get into the industry. All right, so the first big mistake is that I see people jumping straight into the programming languages and trying to learn them by themselves. Okay, let me explain what I mean by this. Well, basically, you say something like, oh, I see that you need to learn Solidity for blockchain development, or I need to learn you know, Rust if I want to build on Solana. So I'm going to do some Solidity tutorials. Wrong. Okay, so let me ask you this. Did you learn to talk by reading a dictionary? No, you learned to talk because you had to. And you heard other people look around the room and point at stuff and say, you know, pencil, you know, chair. And you learn words that way. You can't use a dictionary to learn a new language because guess what happens when you look up words? They're defined by a bunch of other words that you don't know. And so in the same way, if you're trying to learn programming languages from scratch and you're trying to learn the definitions of basic words and grammar without actually constructing sentences, you're not going to be able to learn. So how can you avoid this mistake and actually learn blockchain the right way? Well, basically, you learn the programming languages by doing and by building things. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, you go out and you build an app and you learn the programming languages as you go while you're actually building a blockchain application. So why is this so much better? Well, it's more efficient. All right, you get the context and the programming language at the same time, okay? After all, what's one of the biggest complaints that you hear kids in school say all the time, which is, when am I ever going to use this? Well, you might be asking that question if you're just doing language tutorials and you're learning like what an array is, but you've never seen why you need to use an array in the first place. But you won't be asking that question if you're learning a programming language while you're actually building things, all right? Because the new thing that you just learned, you actually used it in practice. So you learned the thing in the programming language and you learned what it does at the exact same time. And you observe the information so much more quickly and it's sticky and so you don't forget it. So that's the exact method I teach you in my channel and in all of my trainings. Now, I'll add a quick caveat to this, okay? Dictionaries are good for a reason, all right? Dictionaries are there for people who already have some grasp of a language and encounter new things and want to look up what it's for. In the same way, language tutorials also have their place, okay? It's not bad to do language tutorials to learn concepts of a programming language you really haven't grasped fully yet, but it's better doing those things after you've actually gotten a significant amount of mileage out of the programming language in the first place. But you should not start there. Okay, so next, let's talk about AI. All right, AI has introduced a ton of leverage for developers, a ton of new opportunities, and also some massive pitfalls. I see people making mistakes all the time with AI, particularly when they're starting to learn how to program or learning a new technology like blockchain. So let's talk about some of those mistakes. Well, the first is just ignoring AI. All right, people say, I'm worried that AI is going to take my developer job, or I'm worried about learning programming at all because it might be obsoleted by AI. But I'm telling you the honest truth as somebody who uses AI every single day and understands what it's capable of and what it will likely be able capable of in five to 10 years. I don't think AI is going to take your job anytime soon or make programmers obsolete. All right. But a developer using AI might. All right. And therefore, you have to learn it. It's not an option. But when you introduce AI into your learning journey and how matters, for example, like I'm not a math genius, but I can do, let's say, basic advanced math. All right. If you catch what I'm saying. And pretty much any time that I do important math, I use a calculator, but I didn't start there. And if I had never learned arithmetic or algebra, geometry without using a calculator first, 
and also the concepts behind them, like the real skills that I would have never unlocked the more advanced math that I happily use a calculator for now. Because you kind of want to treat AI like a calculator and you want to be able to give it very specific instructions for what you're looking for, all right? And if you don't learn enough programming to be able to tell it exactly what to do, you won't get very good results, all right? Which brings me to my next mistake surrounding AI, which is trying to bypass learning programming at all and just having the AI do everything for you. All right, this is not going to work. It might work for really simple stuff, but nothing sophisticated. All right, because AI is all about inputs and it's all about outputs. And one of the reasons that I say AI isn't going to take your job anytime soon is because it's probably not going to be able to have like a technical project manager just sit down with an AI and replace the entire dev team to create a sophisticated application, all right? They've actually got to know the language of developers to be able to tell it exactly what to do. Again, the inputs define the quality of the outputs. So basically, you need to be a good developer to tell the AI what to do to get the results. And therefore, you need to start learning programming really well before you start leveraging AI because you're not going to get good benefits later. But just for argument's sake, let's say that you had a highly technically literate project manager and you could, they could give the AI very good instructions. Well, here's the problem. AI can also do some pretty incredible stuff, but at the same time, it can actually do some really stupid stuff in the same breath. Okay, I see this every single day. And so you need to be a developer to review the decisions that the AI made in order to know whether the code is good or not. And that's just not a skill you're going to have unless you spent a ton of time developing software. Which brings me back to my previous point. You need to get good at actual programming to use AI effectively, and therefore you shouldn't rely upon it too much early in your programming journey or else you're going to be up a creek. So with some of those top mistakes in mind, what is, I guess, the right way or like what would that look like, a really good way? To get the starter skills, you know, I would, number one, focus on building a project that makes sense to actually use blockchain on. Again, you want to learn by doing, not just learning programming languages by themselves. So let's say you're going to take a really basic cryptocurrency. You're going to code one out and you're going to build an application that interacts with that cryptocurrency. Let's say a crowdfunding application. And you're going to do this full stack. All right. And you're going to learn the programming languages as you go. You're going to learn Solidity. You're going to learn JavaScript for testing, for scripting in the front end. And you're going to do this step by step with someone who knows how to do it, all right? So for example, you could follow one of my YouTube tutorials just to get started, all right? And I would not start using AI to write the code during this phase, all right? What I would use AI for is to ask questions when you don't understand something. You can actually copy and paste your code in there. You can explain it. You say, I don't want you to write any code for me, but help me figure this thing out that I just don't quite understand. Or, you know, you're inevitably going to hit uh, bugs in your code or roadblocks even in this phase and you can use AI to help you get through those types of things and you can also have it give you more context about what's going behind beyond the scenes as you need that and so then once you've created the project and coded it out you know I would start making it do things that weren't in the tutorial and I call this unguided development basically where you're starting to write code and solve problems without someone holding your hand so if it's a crowd sale application you could do things like support new cryptocurrencies that aren't supported you know, set new rules for the crowd sale uh, or even implement basic UI changes like new pages or theming the UI just to get more comfortable with your front end development. And this is actually where you can start using AI more. OK, that's when you can start to write the code yourself. But when you get stuck, that's when you can get the AI to help carry you across the finish line. But if you really want to step on the gas with AI, here's a really good way to do it. All right. That's with front end development, front end development. Let me explain. So we're here to become blockchain developers not UI designers or UI developers. You, you want to have full stack skills so that you can work on the front end and the back end, but you don't have to be a designer, okay? So once you've created a UI that simply works, you can actually use AI to create one that looks way better, all right? Looks super professional, and you can even have it write most of the scaffolding code for you because that's fine. You'll already understand what it takes to create your front end, and you'll be able to wire it up and probably catch any of the mistakes that it's going to make, all right? So here's just an example of a front end tool that you can use to do that. This is Bolt. All right. So Bolt basically helps you create user interfaces with AI prompts. You can see the types of, you know, things that you can create with this. It's got all these different UIs that look really good. You can even see some categories to get some inspiration uh, based upon the type of application that you want to build. So that's one way I wouldn't have the AI write the smart contracts for you. That's going to be a better job for the human. And then basically, but for something that's more commodified, like a front end UI that you might even hire a designer to create or hire a front end developer to do, 
you actually understand the important side, which is blockchain and how to make everything talk to each other. And you can sort of outsource the, um, you know, the wow factor in terms of the visuals to the AI itself. That's a pretty good way to do it, but only after you've created everything from scratch yourself. All right. So those are some of the top mistakes that I see people making when they're trying to learn blockchain right now, especially in the era of AI. Now, if you want to get started doing exactly what I explained in this video today, then how can you do that? Well, first, make sure you smash the like button down below, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and then you can grab you know, any of my free courses on my YouTube homepage. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. But the absolute best way to do this is to jump over the shoulder with a real world expert, okay? So if you want to learn blockchain directly with me and get supported every step of the way and even get help landing a job in the industry, then head on over to dapuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.